da 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 um, yeah. So I'm sick as a dog. I'm very, very sick. I started the chain of sickness. She I was did. sick Thursday and Friday of last week. Then I got better. And then everybody else started, started to fall like dominoes. Uh, you yeah. got better really fast. Yeah. Uh, to the point where I was like, I was... <laughs> Like, who's this bitch thinks she is? <laughs> this, is not a, this, not, this isn't a big deal. Whatever. I'm not going to get sick. And then I got sick, and I got mm-hmm. really, really, really fucking sick. Yeah. I thought that because I lived in a house with someone who had COVID and I didn't get it, that I'd be, be good, but no. 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 Yeah, yeah. Your flu just liked me. It liked me a lot. Oh, share oh, the flu. Oh, humbug. <laughs> but Mary made me a nice, a nice little... Hot toddy. Yep. It's a very strong hot toddy. Have you taken a sip of that yet? No, I haven't. It's very strong. I've never made a hot toddy before, but I understand. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Oh, really good. Fuck. I can see it healing you. (laughs) It's healing her, guys. Ooh. Ooh. So, what have we done this holiday season? We've watched. Uh, what was it? The thing with Will Ferrell and... Uh, Spirited. We Spirited. Spirited. It was actually really good. It yeah. was very good. What was it on Netflix, Hulu, Prime? <sighs> I, can't, I don't fucking remember. One of those. It was good, though. Yeah, it was good. Um, really wanted to watch uh, Christmas Carol Muppet Edition with you, but I won't torture you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of Muppets. You're, you're afraid kind of, of them. kind of freak me out. Which is ironic, considering we have this podcast and we talk about, you know... Very spooky Kirby, things. Kirby, but Muppets, Kirby. no. That's where I draw the line. <laughs> They're so friendly, though. God, this is really strong. Yeah. I is. might get fucked up off of this. I don't know. Well, I mean, we'll that's just the good. plot. Yeah. I'm not going to complain about it. Yeah. Um. So today we thought, <laughs> welcome, by the way, to this holiday edition of Freaks of a Feather. Um, I'm Emily Wooten, and this is... Mary Boom. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi, hello. And um, the only um, holiday-ish edition is The Wreath yes. with the poinsettias, if you're watching. You're welcome. Um, yeah. And get a little festive for you, okay? We don't have a big budget for the decoration department yet, but, yeah. you know, make it a little nice for you. Uh, put you in the holiday mood, and what better to put you in the holiday mood besides telling you... A story that personally pertains to us. Yes. And it is a story of a person we went to school with who turned out to be a murderer. Merry Christmas. And we're not talking about later on down the line she turned out to be a murderer. We're talking about when we went to school with her. When we were in high school. (laughs) Yes. So, today we're going to talk about the murder of Terry, the murders of... Terry and Elisa McGee. So this took place in Knoxville, Tennessee in 2007. (sighs) Get on that. 2007. What were we doing? I mean, we were, if if anybody's not privy to this, Emily and I have been friends for a very long time. Yeah. Um, We, uh, (laughs) we were going into 11th grade, so we were going to be juniors. I had just left. This one school that we had gone to. Which was horrible. Which was a fucking cesspit. <laughs> like, if ever there was to be a murderer to come out of a certain population, it would be this school. Yeah. We're talking gun racks on the backs of trucks, knuckle-dragging heathens, just... One of, you know, it's God's country. Mm-hmm. It's one of America's finest specimens. Um, ooh, they ooh. had a click. When a click mm-hmm. consumes of rednecks. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, Mary and I, I remember it was July and because it was hot as balls, of course, because Knoxville is like a giant uh, fucking frying pan because we rest below the mountains, Appalachian Mountains, and below the Cumberland Plateau. So, it's just this giant um, yeah. fucking frying pan. And so, I remember we woke up. You were spending the night at my house, mm-hmm. and we looked at our phones, and the news had broken 
that this girl that we went to school with named Amanda McGee Mm -hmm. had been arrested for the murder of both of her parents. And I was like... (gasps) Yeah, because you've seen her face a lot growing up. And I, you know, saw her in the halls, Mm -hmm. maybe had a few conversations with her. It's just, it's weird when somebody you see almost on a daily basis, like during the week when you go to school and then they turn out doing something like this. It's just... (laughs) And I mean, it's one of those things where I was like, you know, I was taken aback, but I'm not like super surprised. I mean, I want to preface this with, I wasn't friends with this person. Mm -mm. Um, She was on the outskirts of like my friend group. She was... (sighs) How do I put this in the most delicate way possible? She was the kind of... um, person who was uh, involved in a lot of white trash drama, should we say. Yeah. Uh, she, her vocabulary consisted mostly of four-letter expletives, not much else. Um, she was uh, not the brightest human being. No. And you could, she really tried to put off this, like, facade of toughness mm-hmm. all the time. Um what kind of click was she? She was kind of redneck, but kind of redneck. But she was friends with like a bunch was of. Was she different... like one of those juggalo juggalette types? Well, I mean, there or... were plenty of those people that were actually yeah. very nice. There were some that um, weren't. There were some that weren't, <laughs> but there were also some that were pretty nice. Yeah. She was just. She was problematic. She just would start fights. She was. She was interesting. So I kind of like, she was really loud. Um, I kind of kept away from her. I didn't really fuck around with her. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you watch any interview with her, you'll recognize by her cadence, which is sort of like Porky Pig. I'm not kidding. I told him he's a grown man. He didn't have to kill my daddy and my mama. <sighs> not the brightest person in yeah. the world. Um, not firing on all cylinders. Well, Amanda, and they have a snapped episode yeah. on Amanda, okay, that you can find on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, the snapped episode will tell you, as well as herself and her own words, that she had a pretty okay upbringing. Um, it was just her and her dad for a while. Her mom was a drug addict. Yeah. And so it was just her and her dad, and then... Her wonderful stepmother, Elisa McGee, came into her life, and Mm -hmm. apparently they had an amazing uh, relationship, according to Amanda. Yeah, they hit it off after they went to the Red Lobster one time, (laughs) and they became very close. That was the saddest fucking soundbite. I mean, we we just got around really good. We went to Red Lobster. I remember the first time we ever went. It was like heaven. And Butter Biscuits, they was good. And at least she was a good stepmom to me. God bless. And I want I want to be sensitive to, you know, certain, you know, brackets of social strata. Like, I, like, we had friends that were definitely. I was in one, so. Yeah, I mean, I and in... I was not, I was, like, lower middle class. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to be insensitive, but not everybody ends up murdering their fucking no. parents. No, no. So, anyways, she lived with her father, Terry McGee. And her stepmother, Elisa McGee, who was an accountant. By all means, they had a nice house. I don't know why she always put up a front like she was, like, <sighs> yeah, super tough. and <laughs> Yeah, like, came from the streets type of thing. Like, like you didn't. <laughs> like, you so. didn't wake up underneath a bridge this morning. No. Like, why are you acting like this? Not at all. Anyways. <sighs> so, Amanda also... As it will tell you in many sources, had a proclivity for boyfriend drama. Okay. Oh, did she? Yeah. yeah. And at the time of her parents' murders, she was 15 and she was dating a 21 year old man named Andrew Mann. Mann, yeah. Um, she had met him at a house party. Oh. Of a, um, a friend that lived in the neighborhood. And her parents apparently did not approve of Andrew Mann mm-hmm. because, you know, the age difference is, yeah. yeah. Um, it is what it is. And so she took to sneaking around with Andrew. And the snap episode. 
<laughs> grills the fuck out of this guy. They're like, Andrew Mann, not known to be a heartthrob. <laughs> and then her... <laughs> they really drug him about how they pale drug he was him. and all that kind of stuff. I'm just like, you know, yeah. I don't, Yeah, which... Fair enough. Go look at the pictures. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But also, let's give equal attention to uh, Amanda because uh, not a prize. Not a prize. I mean, if you look at the Snapped episode, tell me how attractive those white girl cornrows are. Not very. Uh, not the hairdo very. is... You just have to see it. Not very attractive. It's. It looks like a Karen cup slash cornrows. It's, it's weird, it's guys. It's bizarre. It's weird. So, after just two weeks of dating, Andrew <laughs> proposed to her. My baby, will you be my wife? Of course I will. I got your baby in my belly. <laughs> and I, I swear to God, <laughs> there were so many stories like this around that time of all these, we're dating for two weeks, be my, be my wife. Mm-hmm. They would get engaged. I mean, just the whole dating thing. The concept is, oh, we're dating. All you did was pass a note, and then you were dating, right? You were dating. Well, they did more than pass notes. They exchanged DNA. Oh, they because, did. <laughs> because um, it wasn't long after that that Amanda was pregnant. So Amanda and Andrew ran away together mm -hmm. um, a few times because um, Amanda told Andrew, allegedly, that her father was abusive. And, well, they ran away to his grandmother's house one time. <laughs> yeah, no one ever found us here. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Grandma called up Amanda's parents was like, hey, I've got your daughter. Do you want me to bring her home? Uh, we do. Yeah. <laughs> so they brought her home. And then she ran away again. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you know it, Elisa called Andrew and threatened to call the cops on him. Yeah. Unless he brought her home. So he did. And her father, Terry, blocked him in the driveway mm -hmm. and threatened him that he would take him to court and have him convicted, have him charged with statutory rape mm -hmm. and allegedly threatened him with a gun. We don't know if that's true. Yeah. Either way, <laughs> around this time, mm -hmm. like we said, it's known that she's pregnant to her friends, but... Her parents don't know. Yeah. Parents don't know. And Mary actually overheard them. Yeah. Sp -sp 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 yeah. Whispering. Whispering. This before you know it came out, like with the murders happened and all that kind of stuff. There was this chitter chatter in one of these classes I shared with her. It was some kind of high drama. I didn't know what it was about, but she was clearly very upset, and her friends were all gathered around here, and they were getting the scoop on everything that was going on, and then not long after that, all of this comes out, and her stepmother and her father are dead, she's pregnant, and yeah. they were on the run briefly. <laughs> they were, yeah, so on July 1st of 2007, several, like, I think two weeks after this encounter yeah. with Terry... Between Terry and Andrew, a gruesome murder was discovered at Jolly Lane <laughs> in Solway, <laughs> Tennessee, which is a suburb of Knoxville. Yeah. Which, why do all horrible things happen at, like, places that are named Jolly Lane. just to be seemingly innocuous? Happy like, holler. Happy holler. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> horrible happened here. Nothing. Um, also, years after the murders a sex offender would move into the house. So Yeah, I found that out by I'm like, where is this house? Like I need to know where this is. And then I find <sighs> that a a sex, a sex offender. offender lives there. I'm like, my gosh. If yep. These walls could talk. Jolly Lane. <laughs> yep. Jesus. Well, on July first, as we said, uh Lisa's sister Christy had been trying to get a hold of her because Christy had just had twin babies, okay? Mm -hmm. And Elisa was very involved, and she was supposed to meet her when she was, you know, supposed to leave the hospital, but mm -hmm. Elisa never showed up. So naturally, she's, like, calling the family, and um, a cousin went to Jolly Lane to do a welfare check. They looked in through the window, and they could see that Elisa was laying on the floor, and so then they called the aunt. The aunt, I guess, had a key mm -hmm. 
and got into the house and she found Elisa dead with bullet wounds on her back on the kitchen floor. Mm -hmm. She then started calling for Terry. No answer. Went to the bedroom where Terry was laying in his bed, shot in the back of the head. Mm -hmm. Now she's thoroughly freaked out. (laughs) And she thinks, oh God, now I'm going to find Amanda dead. And so she opens the door and Amanda's not there. But... Where was Amanda, Mary? Where was she? Oh. So on the night of June 29th, Terry and Elisa were murdered. Amanda and Andrew went out with a bunch of mutual friends, drinking after they secured lodging with um, a friend, a family friend. And, yeah, I, Amanda's pregnant. They're yeah. going out slinging back a bunch of drinks. What? <laughs> they went out drinking? Like where? <laughs> like where? Because <laughs> I doubt it was a bar because they're all, well, except for the boyfriend. So they're probably what? Yeah. At Stony Point, which is this big hangout God. for a bunch of teenagers. Because what? This is June, right? Yeah. So they're probably They went there. out drinking. Yeah, because the Snapped episode actually shows shots. Of the Stony Point area. Which is weird. Which is, you walk through the woods, and there's this little cliff you can jump off into the lake. There's uh, just plenty of broken bottles. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some needles. Um, All the the teenagers go there to smoke pot and drink beer. Myriads of fluids of all kinds. Um, It's... Yes. It's just gross. And so, (sighs) the next day... Yeah... That Saturday, Elisa and Terry's credit cards were mysteriously being charged all over Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Which, if you've been to East Tennessee and Dollywood and all that, you know Pigeon Forge is pretty much Vegas for Baptists. Yeah. It's... It's oh, redneck God. Vegas. Yeah, they're going there. They're probably buying airbrush t-shirts and getting matching <laughs> tattoos, you know? Getting fudge from the candy kitchen. He got me a ring. We're going to get married. We're but going we to can't get, get hitched out here because I'm 15. Right. Yeah. It, <laughs> and then. <laughs> the next day, the uh, the bodies were discovered and Amanda and Andrew were arrested at his friend's house following that trip. That and, tip from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from. We'll, we'll just, just say. We'll just say Rebecca. I Rebecca, mean, yeah. We won't say her last name, but she's in the Snapped interview, which we also know her from high school. <laughs> yeah. I don't know her, know I don't her. know her, know her, but I know it's of like her. mutual friends of other mutual friends, if you will. Yeah, they were getting ready for a barbecue at their friend's <laughs> house, and the cops basically <laughs> showed up and arrested. I mean, for the love of Christ. Just fucking slaughtered you just, your parents. You just murdered both of your parents. What's the plan, Stan? You going to Mexico? No, we're going to go 15 miles across town. They'll never okay. find us. We're going to go to Pigeon Forge and have ourselves a blowout, baby. It's the dumbest shit I've ever fucking heard. Yeah. And so, for Christ's sake, you're a goddamn moron. But not only that, you're a murderous piece of shit, too. Yeah. So, initially, Elisa McGee's family... They thought something horrible had happened to Amanda, mm-hmm. that she had been kidnapped or was being held against her will. Uh, but that was far from the truth. It's sad. So, you see, Amanda had gotten some ideas on how to take care of her controlling parents, quote unquote. Um, <laughs> in June of 2007, Amanda had snuck her father's gun mm-hmm. from inside the house and hid it in a Crown Royal bag. Apparently, how do I make this more white trash? Oh, let's put it in the Crown Royal bag. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, she God. then handed the gun off to her friend, Rebecca, who then drove to pick up Andrew and deliver the gun to him. Hi, Rebecca. That means you're an accomplice to murder. Yeah. <laughs> I did I did look her up on Facebook. <laughs> Honey. That's- I don't want, I don't want. I'm not saying anymore. I don't want the the legion of fleas coming after us. I don't know. (laughs) The legion of fleas. It's fucking mean, but like, I don't. uh, Yeah. uh, So according to Rebecca, she attempted to intervene and she showed up at their house and she was going to talk to Terry 
But Amanda made it appear as though, oh, she wasn't going to go through with it. They're going to call off the hit. Rebecca, call the police. Anyways, on on June, on the, regardless, on the day of June 29th, Terry McGee was asleep in his bed when Andrew Mann entered the house with Amanda's consent. He then went to the, his bedroom. Amanda went to her bedroom and turned on music. And Terry opened fire on the sleeping... No, <laughs> Andrew opened fire on the sleeping Terry. Then they both waited for Elise McGee to get off work. And they shot her in the back as she tried to flee. It's sad. Like, she supposedly <sighs> loved her stepmother so much and appreciated her because she never had her mother growing up. And Why'd you kill her? You know, in this interview, she's like, you know, just loves her and has so much guilt about her not being there. But I'm just like, what the fuck? Anything is better than killing your family. Right. And now, at the beginning of, the, you know, all of this, it's assumed that it's Andrew's idea to kill the parents. That he's obsessive about Amanda and all this stuff. But it becomes clear pretty quickly because after they get arrested... They, a letter is intercepted from Amanda to Andrew, which basically... From jail. From jail, basically saying, Oh, baby, I'm so sad that we got caught. I'm not sad that we did it. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and they describe Andrew as this timid, shy kid. Not very smart. It's not very smart. Not very smart. of all of this anxious tension and that he's pretty much an easy target for Amanda to manipulate, even at a young age. So and, that's at least the way they spin things in documentary. So And Amanda, in her own words, would be like, well, hey, was your 20-year-old man? I, I, he knew better. I didn't, he didn't have to kill my parents. Uh, you knew better. You, you shouldn't have told him to kill your parents. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> really the, the like voice. really go look <laughs> that, it up that's the voice <laughs> um and according to man uh mcgee had told him that if he loved her that he would do this for them yep so so i don't know you guys tell us what the, do you think you yeah know, the, who, who's default in this type of situation because she's mm -hmm. what as of 20 2018 she's trying to get out on parole well yeah well you know, obviously, this is a stark contrast of how she talks about her stepmother, but 2009, Amanda McGee was sentenced. She was tried as an adult because they could tell that this was premeditated. Mm -hmm. Also, Rebecca, loose lips, which, you know, good. <laughs> too little, too late, Rebecca. <laughs> too Jesus little, too late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she lives with a lot of guilt. Um, Does she? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Anyways. She, uh, you know, tells them, basically, it's premeditated. So they try Amanda as an adult. And she's sentenced to 20 years for the killing of her father and 25 for her stepmother. Andrew Mann was given two life sentences, ensuring he will die behind bars. Now, Amanda petitioned for a reduced sentence, mm. um, but it was denied. And so she will be up for parole in 2049 when she is... 54 years old. I mean, some people, they try to better themselves in prison. You know, they read up on philosophy and they Religion. study the, they study the <laughs> law. They become religious, maybe, become spiritual, become involved with social work and outreach. Finish high school. Maybe, <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe write a book, you know. I can, you know, I can only hope that she, you know, tried to better herself. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Well, you know, um, it's it's a lot to live with, and I like guys. I get it. She was young. Ah, uh, yeah. But okay, then again, I also right. got pregnant when I was very young, and I didn't kill my fucking parents. Okay, so right. Before like, y'all go off in the comments, but I just <laughs> <laughs> it takes a special special breed. Yeah. Now, I couldn't find anything on the internet about the baby, of course, because it's a minor. Yeah. But either way, the kid would be 15 now, which is coincidentally the same age that its grandparents were murdered by its mother. So, yeah. interesting. And, again, quite honestly, in my heart of hearts, I want to be, be sympathetic. I want to be empathetic. I want to 
give people that leniency. But at the same time, it's like everybody, you make choices. Everybody goes through a certain level of horse shit in their life. Yeah. You make choices. Okay. I don't care if you're like 15 at the time. Making a choice to fucking kill someone. That's some flawed logic. Yeah. That, is some, that is a problem. When I was 15, I knew right from wrong. <laughs> like, at mm. least in that aspect, right? Like, even when you're young, you make mistakes, right? But that's intense. You need to answer to that one way or another. And right. I don't think you should be out and about and live your life and be free after you've taken somebody's life. I mean, I can't imagine what what's life going to be like. You spent the majority of your life in prison, and then you get out. I mean, what the... What do you have to give to society? I hope, I hope there's, like, a work release program yeah. where they fucking train you on how to do something because you're fucked <laughs> otherwise. The fuck are you going to do? I don't know. But anyways, well, Jolly Lane got bought out by, a, I guess, a sex offender, a pedophile, or something like that. Yeah, I think they're releasing it. So. Fun times on Jolly Lane, everybody. Yeah. Hey, if you're um in Knoxville, do not pick a house on Jolly Lane. And there's all kind of there's, weird there's stuff also, happening around town here lately. I also heard about a fucking house that's like near where I grew up, where this guy fucking ki- also killed his parents and boiled his mother's head yeah. on What's the stove. Yeah, his name? Something guy. But Jesus yeah, he Christ. he dismembered his parents and boiled them in acid, cooked his mother's head, and cut his parents' body parts up and put them in Tupperwares and scattered them throughout the house. Um, that can be another Ooh, hometown horror <laughs> episode for us. Oh yeah, no, we should. Yeah. Um, yeah, also on the news this week. Uh, uh yeah, they <laughs> like, found a human heart and a salt depository where you go where the um salt trucks go. salt trucks go to treat the roads yeah they found a human heart just a human heart so um <laughs> if you're in east tennessee like i guess watch your back apparently I and i was looking up a bunch of other murders apparently we've had like a ton of murders yeah i remember my my dad driving me through my grandparents old neighborhood just like calmly, you know, and he points to this empty lot and goes, that's where the man lived that got murdered, got stabbed by all those people. And I was like, what the fuck? Come again? <laughs> He's like, yeah, just just awful. Apparently he was a really popular hairdresser in town named Joseph uh, Weir. Mm. He had coiffures by Joseph. He was world renowned. And, oh. uh, Somebody showed up to his house and stabbed him to death and left his body out and next to the trash, basically. Shit. Well, he tore the house down, and I've driven by <laughs> since, and there's it's just an empty lot, but there's the people next door put their child's um, playground right oh, there. Oh, yeah, I remember driving by that. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Yikes. Okay. Yikes. Well, anyways, we hope you have a merry holiday, whatever it is. Um, Try not to kill your family. Um, We know it's hard sometimes, but Jesus, show a little restraint. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I'm going to go drink the rest of this hot toddy and sweat out my illness. We will see you after Christmas. Hope you have a good one. Bye. We love you. Bye.